Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, A Little Geek, A Little Chic. This is going to be part two of the book haul for the month of June because I acquired some books. So grab yourself your beverage of choice and let's get into the second part of the June book haul. Okay, I'm gonna get myself comfortable, and you should too. So, we're gonna start this off with the books that I got from the Symphony um, Charity Used Book Sale. Again, all these books were like two or three dollars Canadian, and it was a great haul day two also. Surprise no one, I went back again in July and have a few more books that I'm looking at over there. Definitely not as many as the month of June, so don't worry, I controlled myself the last time. But we're going to start off with Neverwhere. So this book I picked up from the used book sale because I heard a lot about it on booktube. It is a popular title here on booktube and I'm excited to get into it. I don't know anything really about it, only that it's one of his best sellers, best written, uh, most popular books, and I got my hands on it for like two dollars. All these books are in really great shape. Some of them I don't think were even read or open. <laughs> I think you might have got them for Christmas and are just like, okay. It's not a video game, so I gave it away. And then I come in and get a great deal. So, next up I have Beth Harbison. If you guys don't know who Beth Harbison is, she kind of gives me um, Sophia Kinsella sort of vibes as a writer. Just easily approachable, great characters. Um, her Shoe Addicts Anonymous book I have around here somewhere. I really loved that book. It just gave me all the feels and it was such a good book. So I highly recommend picking that up. If you haven't read anything from her before, the Shoe Addicts Anonymous book is fantastic. And I'm hoping for good things from this one, which is called Thin, Rich, and Pretty. Um, again, I don't know too much about these books. When I go to the book sale, I know authors I like, and then I want to read some of their other stuff. Then there's another Beth Harbison, Hope in a Jar. Hope in a Jar I got, again, for, this one was $2, in great shape, perfect condition. Excited to read both of those. Next I got a book completely as a recommendation from a friend of mine, uh, Justine, who loves this. This is her favorite Stephen King book. And I loved the movie, so I thought, you know what, I should read it and have it on my shelf, and that is The Green Mile. If you don't know, The Green Mile is about a um, mentally disabled individual in a prison and how he helps others through channeling their pain and their sickness out of them. And it's just a great, great movie. Like I can only assume the book will be even better. So I'm excited to that one. It's Stephen King, he's no introduction. We all know the King, right? Then I got a nonfiction and it is by Howard Schultz, who's the chairman of Starbucks and that's Pour Your Heart Into It. Now I read Onward by Charles Schultz and it's, er, Charles, Howard Schultz and it's up there on my shelf. And I'm very excited to get into this one. Um, I love Starbucks. I like knowing they're so good at what they do. I also like knowing their background, their history, how they got to where they did. His theories on marketing and life are just enthralling. So I'm excited to pick that one up. Next, as you saw in video number one, I've been trying to acquire a lot of Christina Lauren's uh, backlist titles, especially the beautiful series because you can't really find them anywhere and the prices when you do find them are crazy and a lot of times people don't know what they have and they'll give them away to like places like the book sale. So I ended up with Beautiful Bastard which is a book from their uh, group and I ended up with Beautiful before. There's quite a few books in the series so I'm not even close to it on. I only have four and if I'm correct there's like eight or nine. I don't even know if it'll show it in here. No, not in this one. Some of them show it, how many books there are in the series, but I know there's quite a few. And I have three, now four of them. So I'm gonna keep trying to collect them a little bit at a time as I see them at like the used book sales. And that's how I'm gonna hopefully get that co that collection. Next up, a book that was very popular last year, and that is Alice, Alice Hoffman's The Rules of Magic. 
This is a companion or a second sequel novel to Practical Magic, I believe. And I haven't read Practical Magic, but this is the prequel. So I could read this first and then read Practical Magic, I believe. If not, let me know in the comments down below if it's one of those prequels that you're meant to read after or if it's one of those prequels that you can read before, like if it's one of those interchangeable situations. You can pick which one. Let me know in the comments down below. I don't want to ruin Practical Magic for myself, but I'm interested in reading this guy, so hopefully I can uh, read it before so I don't have to find the other one just yet. But it is in great shape. Three dollars. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Now, next up, I'm not gonna lie, I just got a couple of hardcover books that are fancy hardcovers because they're classics and I want to do one, I have a little decorative shelf over there that I'm facing when I'm reading in these chairs and I wanna do some like funky spine and like cloth type books. And so I got, picked up this one, isn't it gorgeous? And it is The Thousand and One Nights. So I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'll pick that one up. So this is a Harvard Classic Deluxe Edition. And I'm excited for that. The other thing, you guys, that I really, really like is when you pick up these books and the books have personality at these used book sales. Like this one has a signature in it. They got it for Christmas. It says, To Lisa, Love from Michael, Xmas 81 with an X. So... I cherish these because it's also like a little bit of the book's history so it's a little bit of the book's personality in here and that's just great to get your hands on something that's got meaning as well so if you are Lisa or Michael and you this is your book and you'd like it back you can let me know because I'm happy to be a part of the story but also happy to give it back if it's yours um that was like three dollars then this one I got is 375 and I just loved it David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. And the side is just great. It's one of those Reader's Digest versions that you could get. Everyone could get and like order them in. And the, the spine on these is just stunning. So I'm very excited to have this on that shelf facing out with the other ones on top. Now, next I got a local author's book. It's his memoir. The story of his life. He is a local author. He wrote some good books. I have one um, here around the up top there, Cherry Blossom. And I am excited to get to this because I've always wanted to read his story. And it was there at the book sale and it was things like $2 or something like that. And he unfortunately due to some back pain and some issues that some pain management issues he was having he passed away uh and i think he was maybe in his 40s so way too soon i'm sure there were great things to come from him yet and i am very excited to read about growing up in our city in like the <laughs> west side not the best neighborhoods and uh how it affected him and made him who he was. And that is West West Side Story. This is the kind of guy he was, punny, by Wes Funk. So I'm excited to get into that one. And I hope it's gonna be great. I don't think it will disappoint. His books never do. Next thing I got, you guys, was a set. And I was so excited when these were all on the shelf and they were all in pristine condition, never opened. Like nobody even read these. And I am thrilled that I have all three of the Crazy Rich Asian books in my favorite covers because these are the covers that I loved and so excited. I can't wait. I'm going to reread these at some point because they're just such good books and he does them so well. But I also have Sex and Vanity up there on the shelf that I need to get to. So I'm excited to put these up there with Sex and Vanity and have them my little shrine to uh, Kevin Kwan all together. If you haven't read Crazy Rich, Rich Asians yet, please, please do. It is enthralling. And the movie does a very good job. So if you want to watch a good movie book adaptation, this, so good. So funny. And comes from an own voice's author. Um, so you get realistic characters. and But so realistic. But you feel like they're like 
super out there, but then you realize it's coming from a place of truth and the books are just super great. They're about a, um, Asian couple, one who is super wealthy, but his girlfriend doesn't know about his family and his wealth and all that until he takes her back to his home country city to meet his family and be his date for this posh, the wedding of the century, apparently, that he's the best man for, that she has no idea, but her friends do because it's all the rage in the Asian tabloids, this wedding. So I'm very excited to have these on my shelf as they are definitely one of my favorite series of all time that I've read. Just super fun books. Those are just super fun books. Next I have book four in the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. I found, um, what is it called now? I'm not sure where it is. I think it's Gunslinger. It's probably over in the fantasy because it's like his epic fantasy kind of novel. And yeah, Gunslinger. I have that book, book one. I am finding them at used bookstores and book sales and picking them up in good editions. Like I don't really want the little mass market paperbacks. So I found this one, Wizard and Glass. It's the fourth book. So I picked it up because I have book one and I have book four. So I need two, three. I think there's seven, five, six, and seven. But we're starting with one and now four. And we'll work our way to filling the collection as we go. And this is his... Uh, fourth book in the Outlander series of Wizard and Glass. Is it called the Outlander series or the Dark Towers? It's the Dark Towers series. So super great edition that I got in, again, really great shape for a used book. And this was $2.75. So can't beat that. I'm very excited. This is, this is epic. So hopefully I really like the Gunslinger and can continue on. Then I got one more fantasy book and that'll be the final book that I got from the used book sale. And I know nothing about this one, only that I have seen it at uh, McNally Robinson. I've seen it at Indigo. I've seen it at our used bookstore in town, um, one of them. And I've always been intrigued, especially by the summer, the, the cover and the media they use to print on. It's like one of those like um, papers that almost feels Linenish, and it is The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. And this looks fantastic. It's in great shape. It is a tome, though. It is um, it's around 700 pages, just under 700 pages. So it's going to be an undertaking. I have no idea what it's about. And uh, I've which said to get into it when I'm interested in some more fantasy reading, which usually happens in the winter. So I'll add this to my collection. At least it's book one. So if I hate it, I know I hate it. If not, I can try to scout out the other ones. I believe there's three. It's a trilogy um, at used bookstores for Valley Village. <laughs> now we are going to get into the last four books I got. They're all new. They're not from the used book sale. Um, the first one I got at Home Sense. Go figure. And this is for my shelf. Like I said, I wanted to have a little decorative shelf with some fun spines and couldn't pass this one up. This one is such a cute addition. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is now, I own it, which is super exciting for fall. I'm going to read it hopefully in spooky season. And uh, it'll be up on the shelf with the other ones I got like David Copperfield. And I'm excited about that. The next one I got is <laughs> keeping in trying to collect all the Christina Lawrence. I got Soulmate Equation. And I guess the soulmate equation is like, um, you do a test to see who you match with. I don't know if it's like DNA or if it's just like based on a, a quiz or something. And it's supposed to be super accurate and tell you who your soulmate is. Well, these people matched up these two characters and I guess their match was the, uh, most commonality or the best match they've ever had come out of this um, program and it turns out they don't really like each other <laughs> so that's like a flop for the program so the people running the program are like hey hey we just need you guys to just coast with it for a little while we can't have it be you guys are the biggest match we've had and then crash and burn right away off the hop so I believe they go for the fake date I think it's like a fake dating trope where they go for this like uh, fake dating kind of thing and um yeah I'm excited to get into that hopefully 
I'm I'm a fan. I like the friends to lovers or the fake dating. So pretty sure I will like this one a lot. Kind of gives me vibes of like a couple other ones I've heard of before, like the Rosie Project. It's so good. Um, but I don't think it'll be quite like the Rosie Project. The Rosie Project was great. Then I got one of my most anticipated books of the year. And that's One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. So if you're not familiar, it is a um, female, female romance. Her last one was Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is right here. And it is a male, male romance. This one's a female, female romance. And what happens is our main character is on the subway and sees a, another lady on the subway and is enthralled by her. And turns out that it is like a rift in time that she's seen her in and she has to figure out who this is or something of that nature. And so it's like a little bit like sci-fi, a little bit romance, and I am all here for it. Then the last book I have, drum roll please, Save the Best for Last, my most anticipated book of the year by far to date is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you saw my TBR for July, I am going to read this this month and I am so freaking excited. Um, I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. I started reading her books when Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo came out. I hadn't read anything prior to that. And then I've fallen down the hole of Taylor Jenkins Reid. One True Loves was fantastic. Um, Daisy Jones and the Six was amazing. I mean, like her books, she's so good at developing characters. They make you want to look up the actual characters. Like for Daisy Jones and the Six, I wanted to look up the band and listen to everything that that band put out. But guess what? They're not real. So, but that's okay. Uh, same thing happened with Evelyn Hugo. I wanted to see this lady's movies, but guess what? She's not real, but she's, they're so good, these books. And she's so good at describing her characters. It makes you feel just connected to them like a real person. And I am all here for this one. This is about a famous family who I'm sure you guys have heard about it on booktube like crazy already. Famous family. Fire starts at a party they have at their Malibu beach house. Some of the family not interested in the limelight, in the spotlight. Some of the family loves the spotlight. So it's kind of gives me the Ozzy Osbourne family and uh, Kardashian family vibes. And apparently at the end of the night, this party, the house is on fire and everybody's little dark secrets and demons and stuff are revealed and how they come to grips with it um, and what they do from there. So super excited for this one. Could not wait for the release date. I was stoked. And yeah, I'm just looking at this giant pile of books on the floor around me and thinking I have now a lot of work to do to put them into their spaces. But thank goodness I have new shelves and a lot of space for books because I am going to need it, it looks like. But that is it for me for now. Thank you so much for watching part two of my June book haul. Um, July will be shorter. It should all be in one. And that's all I have for you right now. As always, please give me your likes and your subscribes. I appreciate all of those likes and subscribes. Comment down below and let me know what you are reading this summer and what your most anticipated book of the year is. Is yours Malibu Rising? And thank you again for watching. Have a great day.